Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to St Luke, chapter 15, beginning at the 11th verse. It's a very well-known story. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he'd spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. and He began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. When he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I'll get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him. He was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. When he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked him what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. He answered his father, listen, for all these years I've worked like a slave for you. I've never disobeyed your command. You've never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And the father said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. There are three parables that make up chapter 15 of the Gospel according to Luke. The third parable, the prodigal son, is one of those great stories from Luke's Gospel that's unique to Luke and has found its way into everyday language and culture. It's also an archetypal story of a wasteful son, a loving parent, and an envious older sibling. It resonates so well with most people's experience, it does not need too much unpacking by preachers. And yet, there is some real value in, tending, in attending to the place of this parable as the third in a series, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and then the lost son. It's as if Jesus is increasing the stakes in each story. He responds in these three stories to criticism from the scribes and Pharisees that he, Jesus and his disciples, enjoy what we might call table fellowship with tax collectors and sinners. In eating with such people, Jesus and his disciples are making themselves ritually impure and so Jesus' three parables are meant to be a sharp reminder to the scribes and Pharisees that Jesus has come to bring good news to those who are far from the law, 
and far from the special relationship that the scribes and Pharisees already claimed to have with God. Each of these three parables has a similar shape, a similar outcome, and a similar teaching point. The lost sheep is 1% of the flock, yet Jesus taps right into the contemporary experience of agricultural loss amongst his hearers. Any man who has lost a sheep will search diligently for it, even at the expense of the rest of the flock. When the search is successful, the owner of the sheep calls his friends and neighbours together to share with them his good news about the lost sheep who's been found. Just so, Jesus says, there'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. The second of these three parables, the parable of the lost coin, makes a woman, the keeper of the house, the main protagonist. This is again very typical of St Luke's Gospel. He often includes women in his Gospel. The anxiety caused by the loss of the coin is higher than that caused by the lost sheep. Now we're talking about a 10% loss, not just a 1% loss. The woman sweeps and seeks diligently and finds the lost coin, and then, like the sheep owner, calls her friends and neighbours together to tell her story, to share her good news. Just so, Jesus says, there's joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. The progress in significance is clear. The sheep matters, but the coin matters more. So the third parable, the lost son, brings a deeper level of anxiety and outcome significance because we're hearing now about a person, a son, an heir, who gets lost just like many young people get lost. There are three protagonists in the story of the lost son. The prodigal who asks for his share of inheritance and then squanders his future in dissolute living. There's no way that the father can seek this lost son because he's travelled as far away as possible from his home and his family. He doesn't want to be found or judged. And so the father remains at home, working the farm with his elder son, who's proved to be reliable, hardworking and serious. After the wonderful description of the prodigal son's descent into poverty and ritual impurity, he lives with pigs, it's his discovery of the memory of his father's generosity that brings the prodigal home in shame and disgrace, casting himself at his father's mercy. And just like the sheep owner who wants to share his joy and the woman with the lost coin who can't wait to share her rejoicing at finding that which was lost, so too the father cannot help but rejoice that his lost son is now no longer adrift but has been found at the home gate. This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. He's repeated three times in this short parable. This phrase from the father, this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, would make an excellent end to the triplet of stories about loss and finding. But wait. Jesus has another layer to this story. The third protagonist, the elder brother, is re resentful, angry, and disheartened by the generosity of his father. Just as in every family, there's a big dose of sibling rivalry here. What about me? asks the elder son. I want what he had. The jealousy and resentment is almost palpable. But the father replies, son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. In Luke's language, you are never lost like your brother. So the party happens because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is not just a story about a lost sheep or a lost coin, or about a lost person, a loved son. We cannot know what the scribes and Pharisees experienced as they listened to these parables. We can assume that after the resurrection, the early Christians 
would have heard resonance of the resurrection in these stories and perhaps even identified themselves as lost but now found. Perhaps the scribes and Pharisees could see themselves in the story of the third protagonist, the elder son, who had the father and the farm, the law and the prophets, and yet somehow got lost in their journey towards fullness of life. I always think that cradle Christians, like me, those who grew up with the faith, and particularly cradle Anglicans, are a bit like the elder brother when we encounter the enthusiasm and excitement of new Christian converts. It's a warning story. So what appears to be straightforward stories about animals, coins, and even people who are lost and then found turn out to be opportunities for us to look at ourselves and to learn again what it means to be embraced by God's love, to be forgiven and made welcome and treated like the most valued, valuable members of God's family. Even you, even me. Let me pray. God of compassion, you are slow to anger and full of mercy, welcoming sinners who return to you with penitent hearts. Receive in your loving embrace all who come home to you and seek them at your bountiful table. With all your children, they may feast with delight on all that satisfies the hungry heart. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Perhaps instead of a blessing today, I should play Bruce Springsteen singing Everyone's Got a Hungry Heart. But anyway, may God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>